My call back here in Indianapolis, taking a look at what the Nebraska women did last year. Doesn't show this on there, but they beat four ranked teams last season. Northwestern twice, Ohio State, Michigan State. They were a young squad, ninth in the conference, but a couple all Big Ten selections were there last year and are back here this year. That is Izzy Bourne and Sam Hybe. They are joining me at the desk alongside head coach Amy Williams as we talk about this team. Um, it was young. And yet you look at the roster this year, four true freshmen, four redshirt freshmen. You could almost argue it's younger this year than last year. Well, we definitely have a good uh, blend and balance of some returning team captains and some experience with four uh, starters returning to our roster. But um, we're bringing in six new players, five freshmen, um, some redshirted players. So uh, we definitely have a, a, a unique blend of experience and, and some young energy. Izzy, where's this team got to be better this year than last year? Uh, I think we need to be more consistent. I think we had games where we came out and we, I think we shocked ourselves and games where we just weren't ready. So I think if we are consistent throughout this season, we'll, we'll have a good season. If you can't tell from the accent, Izzy's from Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> Sam, have you gotten more vocal over your time in Lincoln? Um, I don't think, I, maybe a little bit. Um, I know some of my coaches have been telling me that I have. Uh, that's definitely my goal is to be more of a vocal leader where I can. Um, I don't think I'll ever be more or one of the scream at you, that type of leader, but maybe take you on the sideline and talk to you there. Um, but, yeah, I'm working on it. Probably won't swear as much as Izzy, yeah. as we understand, no. right? She's <laughs> Try a big not problem to. <laughs> <time. laughs> um, you told me last year, since you've been at the program, rebounding has been the Achilles heel. Is it still that way with this team? Uh, this team is placing a huge emphasis and focus there, and, and there are times uh, in practice where our scout, scout guys are teaching us that that needs to continue to be something that we focus on. But, um, you know, we've looked back at all the statistics, and, and the top teams in the league have consistently been the best rebounding teams. And so we know what the, you know, ticket is to really take an, a leap forward, and, and we're going to have to really continue to grow in that area. What can you, as a coach, do, though, especially when you lose a Kate? Kane, who was such a presence in the post and the all-time shot block leader for the program. Yeah, I mean, we've all had to adjust with the loss of Kate Kane when you have a shot blocker like her. Um, you know, everybody, even the perimeter defenders, have to make adjustments. But I think our kids are really buying into um, team defense and uh, consistently committing to the discipline of boxing out. Sam, how do you describe Ashley Scoggins' game? She's a shooter. Uh, we tell her every day in practice, keep letting that thing fly. Um, and she's got really deep range, too, so that definitely helps her game. Um, but I think with my ability to get to the basket and having Ashley there spotting up uh, to consistently knock down shots is going to be really good for us this year. I want to ask you about Kendall Coley joining the team last year in January. That's It was good and beneficial. It's also probably tough for someone in that spot. Do you expect her to make a big leap forward this year now that she'll have sort of had a full year to be on campus? Yeah, I think the biggest strides that Kendall made one year ago by joining us early was just it allowed her to get into the weight room and really start to build some strength. And she kind of understands after, you know, playing in nine or 10 or 12 games, something like that um, for our team last year that um, she understands the physicality of the Big Ten and what's come in her way a little bit more. And so um, now that she's able to learn our schemes from the beginning and, and not be thrown into the fire, I think that's really going to be a huge advantage for her. Sam, we're in the baseball playoffs. If I'm not mistaken, you played on your high school boys baseball team? Yes, I did. What kind of pitches did you throw? Um, I was more of a locator. I didn't really overpower a lot of hitters, uh, especially when we got older into high school, um, but just like fastball, curveball. Greg Maddox changed. type. You yeah. found your spots. And just you... locating. Locating was my game. You miss it? <laughs> yeah, I do. I yeah. love it. I loved every second of it. That's pretty cool. There's got to be a way we can work a baseball in to practice or something, <laughs> right? There's something <laughs> we can know. find out. Hey, we, we were just talking before. She had a half-court shot in that Maryland uh, NCAA tournament game, or the Big Ten tournament game. Was that Maryland or was that? Yep, it was Maryland. Right? Where yep. the ball knocked away with two seconds on the shot, she flung it up. So <laughs> that, that wasn't her first half-quarter either, <laughs> right? her career at Nebraska. So I don't know. Maybe some of that baseball skill coming into play. <laughs> Uh, a really fun team last year. Really looking forward to seeing you guys this year. Thanks so much for joining us, Sam, Izzy, and Amy. All right, let's get over to the men now with Dave. Mike, thanks. Here's the story with Nebraska men's hoops and 
It's about what's coming in for Fred Hoiberg's team, including Bryce McGowan's, the highest rated recruit in school history, some talented transfers, including Alonzo Birch, who is about to join us here. Chance to end that NCAA tournament drought and get Nebraska basketball back into the big dance. Joined now by Fred Hoiberg, Trey McGowan's, and the aforementioned Alonzo Verge. Welcome, guys. Great to have all three of you here with us. Coach, this is a very different team from last year. In what ways does the do the new members of this team change the way in which you are going to be able to play? Well, I, I think a big thing, great, first of all, to see you, Dave. Great being back in person. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, I'm sorry. Here, here in Indianapolis. The, yeah, yeah, the, the, we'll get the right to the questions. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, I'm a bottom line guy. <laughs> but, yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah, coach. always good to see you. But, yeah, let me just start with these two guys here that, that uh, are, are with us in Indianapolis, you know, starting with Trey, who has been in our program, and very important for us as we have some continuity back from last year's group uh, for the first time since we took over two years ago, uh, really from the ground up. And, you know, I thought last year's team was making great progress, and then we got hit with the shutdown uh, about midway through the year where we had to sit out for 21 days and play a crazy schedule to finish our year but you know led by Trey and, and uh, some of our other older players we really played our best basketball through that adversity uh, what what Trey has done is helped the newcomers along Alonzo uh, you know certainly our freshman class who we feel great about Bryce uh, Wilhelm Breidenbach, uh, Karan McPherson, and, uh, and uh, Oleg Kojenitz. So uh, when you have older established players that can help the young guys and, and talk to them about the system where we had some success late in the year, it makes life easier, certainly on the coaches. Uh, when the players can look at each other in the eye, uh, have an honest conversation, hold each other accountable. Uh, and that has happened uh, so far, led uh, by Trey and also Alonzo, who came in. Unbelievable for us to be able to get a player that caliber when we did. Uh, Delano Banton kept his name in the draft, happy for him signing a guaranteed contract uh, with the Raptors. But bringing a player of Alonzo's caliber late in the process has been phenomenal for us. Guy that can get into the paint, make plays. Uh, our big challenge right now is making sure we continue to make the right play, you know, make simple plays. Plays. We've got, uh, I think the biggest upgrade is with our perimeter shooting uh, on this year's team. So sometimes the single is better than the home run, getting in there and making the right play. But these two guys have been phenomenal. They've been great leaders uh, for our younger players. And we can continue on with that. Once we start playing games, we're certainly going to have a chance. How challenging is it with lots of new players here, Trey, to build chemistry? It seems to me that when you've got a lot of new faces, part of it is how do you figure out how to play with one another? Um, like, like Coach said, um, really just holding each other accountable. Um, before we left, we had a team meeting um, in my apartment really to just um, kind of talk about each other's role and really just understand that um, we need each other to um, reach um, our goals personally, um, and we, do, we just have to win in order to reach our goals. Alonzo, those of us in the central and eastern time zone uh, that the Big Ten is comprised of who maybe have a little trouble falling asleep at night, mm -hmm. know how good a scorer you are uh, from going home and, and watching some West Coast hoops. You, of course, had a great uh, run at Arizona State. What made Nebraska the right place for you? Um, I would say the style of play, um, the way Coach Horkberg coaches um, is just perfect for my style of play, the uh, spacing and just um, all the pieces that we have now on our team, um, it fits perfectly in uh, to how I play. When I think about your team last year, Coach, one of the things that stands out to me is the interior. It felt like on both ends of the court, you struggled there. Tell us how you've addressed that with this roster. Well, I, I think we're much more versatile in our front line this year. And, you know, one big addition to our team is Wilhelm Breidenbach. Literally a big addition. Big addition, yes. 610 <laughs> addition. Yeah, yeah but he, uh, the versatility he has, uh, you know, one thing that when you have a front court player that can take away, the bigs in our league are so physical, they're so dominating at the rim. When you can take away those guys and empty out the paint for guys like Trey, guys like Alonzo, guys like Bryce that can get into the paint and make plays, uh, it makes life easier when you can take that guy away from the basket and stretch out the floor. We run a five-out spread offensive system, very similar to what a lot of NBA teams are doing right now, and now it's taking advantage of opportunity when we get them. We've had a very good shot profile in the first two years. We wanted to establish that style of play, even though we knew uh, where we took over as a rebuild, we were going to be undermanned. Uh, but we feel great about the pieces that we've added, uh, you know, the spacing that we've added, in, in, including on our front line. Derek Walker, who missed half of last year, then went through a tough COVID battle. I'm really excited to have him for a full 
season. Eduardo Andre made huge strides, seven footer at yeah. the end of the year. So, you know, Lat uh, Mayan at times played uh, the five force, another guy that can space the floor. So versatility at that position is so important in today's game, uh, and we feel very good about how we've addressed those needs. You mentioned shot profile. For those who aren't totally into the analytics, explain what you're trying to do in terms of your shot selection. Yeah, we, we've actually, uh, where we have generated our shot attempts, 82% uh, of our shots last year were in the restricted area or behind the three-point line. And in the world of analytics we live in, mathematically, those are the two best areas on the floor where you're looking to generate those shots. Uh, we feel really good about our roster and taking advantage of those. We didn't finish very well at the rim last year. Our numbers were, were low and we also didn't shoot a high percentage. But with the athleticism that we've created in the floor spacing, it's going to hopefully generate more rim attempts by staying closer and taking away the three. And when they help in, again, making that simple play with good spacing, uh, will generate those three-point attempts. Trey, everyone knows how good you are defensively, everyone who follows this league. How do you take the next steps with your game offensively? Um, offensively, really just taking um, whatever the defense gives me. Um, and then just continually um, working on my shot with Coach Hoiberg um, as well as um, working with him with making simple plays and understanding the pieces um, that I have around me. How about from your point of view, Alonzo, how can you expand your game from where you were at Arizona State? Um, um, here I have a different role than I had at uh, Arizona State, so, you know, I'm taking that head on. And um, what, What's the different role? What's changed? I'm here to uh, be the point guard of my team and lead and lead the guys. And, um, you know, just lead by example, um, just doing the right things every day, day in, day out, and just show the guys um, that hard work can pay off. Okay, we've gone on long enough. We've said the name, but we haven't really talked about Bryce McGowan's. Give us a sense uh, of what makes him special. Let's start with his brother first, right? Yeah, he's got uh, a lot better idea. Yeah, yeah. Give us a sense of what makes him special. And, and I'm not talking about, like, you know, he cleans his room really well or anything like that. Um, just how much work and um, how much he's look he he is looking to improve and just grow day in and day out. Um, so I mean, being away from him for quite a while when I was at prep school, and then just being in college, just seeing him grow, um, that, 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 that probably makes me. Um, pr he just really makes me proud, um, as well as the family for sure. To, to what extent were you involved in this cell job here? I mean, were um, you? Were you working him hard to get him to come to Nebraska? I'm, I really am. I'm, I'm genuinely yeah. interested. Like, yeah. how do you how do you use someone's brother in recruiting? What was yeah. the you know? Give, give us a sense of what that was like. I, it, it was no. It was nothing. No recruiting. Um, I had to do. Um, really, he just saw how the staff, how genuine and the staff was. Um, Coach Hoiberg, and I mean, a lot of colleges they they liked a lot to you. Um, Coach Hoiberg and his staff they were they were just um, kept it real from the jump. And, I mean, you could see that day in and day out. Um, I mean, Bryce was kind of close, um, just how, how often we talked um, or whatnot, uh, things like that. So, yeah, just being genuine. Oh, what makes him special? Well, it just first of all, it's his God-given talent. <clears throat> uh, and I've talked about this in the past. You know, Trey and Bryce, they, they have unbelievable parents that raise them the right way. And, uh, you know, what makes Bryce unique as a basketball player is – He's very fluid on the floor. He's got a great stroke. He's got unlimited range. And his athleticism is uh, something that sets him apart from a lot of players. Great length. He's got a, a good wingspan. Uh, you know, at the same time, we all need to understand there is a learning curve for all kids that come in. These two can speak on that. As far as when you come into college and make that jump, you're going to have highs and lows, ups and downs. That's a great thing about having uh, Trey and, and some older leaders that have been through it that can help navigate our freshmen uh, through those tough times. But as far as uh, from a talent perspective and some of the things Bryce does, you know, it just wows you at times what he does out there on the floor and how he can take over uh, portions of a practice. But, uh, you know, we're grateful that, that we have him, um, you know, the, the the McGowan's family and how they helped throughout that process, uh, you know, was phenomenal. So we, we feel great about uh, about Bryce's future uh, and about the future of our program. Well, I'm excited to be wowed. <laughs> Looking forward to it, as I know all Nebraska fans are. The rest of the Big Ten might not be quite as excited to, to be wowed, but uh, it, it should be really exciting. Uh, really good to visit with all of you. Alonzo, welcome to the Big Ten. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, you having me. Yeah, great to have you here, Trey. Coach, thanks so much, guys. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Thank you.